you want the pieces to fit together. You want them slide together smoothly, but you want them somewhat tight. You don't want a really loose fit. So you generally want to use a very small blade. This is three quarter inch thick material. So I'm really going to push it and I'm going to work with a number three blade. All right, I'm going to do the something. Normally you would make the inside cuts and then the outside, but in the case of a puzzle, it's better to make the outside cut first. So let's see. Definitely want the speed all the way up. And it's good to be a little slow going because of using such a small blade. Now the important thing is that you don't want to start burning. If there's any hint of that, then I'll switch to a bigger blade, but let the blade do the work. Take your time. You should be doing this because you enjoy doing it. If you don't, then I'm not sure why you're doing it. I do this because I enjoy doing it. It's also business for me. I retired from working for anybody else and I'm self-employed. So what I do in puzzles is I'll do the outside first and then I will make any cuts that go all the way across and avoiding any cuts where there's show it to you in a moment. So there's the penguin. What I'll next do next is this cut here that goes all the way across. I will do this cut up here from the bottom and that can go all the way across as well. Uh, I like to do those kind of things first and a couple of these others go all the way across it. it I, I've just found that, that things come out much more smooth. Comes out, come out smoother. Now I want to do those kind of cuts. Then try to make one that changes direction. Now the most important thing when you're cutting a puzzle is that the pieces fit together from either direction. And so, two things. The blade has to be a 90 degree to the table. If it's not, the pieces will slip together from one direction but not from the other. And the other thing is you can't push the blade too hard or the blade tends to flex and then you don't get a 90 degree either. So, so I'm taking my time. There we go. Comes off easily. Slides. Slides that way. And it slides this way. So we've got a good 90 there. I, I know the last time I made something on here, I checked it very carefully for 90 and I locked the table in place. So now we'll go and make all these other cuts. I'm making two of these puzzles, but I guarantee you, as careful as I may be, the parts won't be interchangeable. They'll be probably just a little bit off, even when I'm trying to follow the line perfectly. And just know from experience that these things never follow the line perfectly enough. Now, whoever buys this puzzle, won't know because the pattern will be gone and 
puzzle is going to fit together perfectly. But what I'll do is, as I cut this, I'll put it back together to keep the two. And I'm going to go a little past this. This cut wasn't all the way across. I'll show you what I did in just a moment. I went a little past that intersection and came back because otherwise there would be a little bit of a rough spot where I made that turn. show this here the right here I went a little bit past this so that when I go back in to make this cut that's already been started and I've got a smooth I'll have a smooth surface there not a rough surface but not a rough area from starting and stopping all right that's kind of it those are the basics on cutting the puzzle there's the first penguin completed. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces. I will take off the pattern. That's why I like scroll saw tape. That's it. You get a finger underneath a corner. It pulls right off. There's no residue. It's not sticky. It doesn't leave anything sticky behind. Anyway, it's obviously sticky, but it doesn't leave any res any sticky residue. So let me show you a little bit uh, my thoughts on the elephant before I move on. We'll do the outside like we did for the penguin. This one, I think I'm going to cut the base first. The feet go into the, the four legs go into the base. So I'm going to, going to do that. Alright, that's the base. Now I'll make the cuts inside for the, the three cuts inside there for the legs, and then I'll do the remainder of the outside cuts. Puzzles are done. And what they need is a little bit of sanding on the bottom. So it's just a tiny bit of tear out on these. Not much. 